Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And this is the Civivi Trailblazer Large. The larger version. The 3.5 inch version. Which is pretty amazing. It's pretty awesome. And I have to say, I'm really hoping that Civivi makes a liner lock or a bolster lock version out of this. Please, Civivi. Same everything, just make it a bolster lock. That would be so amazing. This thing is a knife, like the, the style, the shape, the grind, the everything is, it's, to me, I think this thing is a beautiful, beautiful looking knife. It just looks like such a good looking knife, such a useful knife to me. And it is, it is. But man, would I love it in a, a bolster lock version. Now, I do understand that there are a lot of places and people that need a slip joint, which this is. It does not have a lock. It has an incredibly strong pull to it. A great walk and talk. And, but it's not, it's not a liner lock version. So it's not going to be a fast knife, but it's still very badass. Now, I know this is not available yet, but it is going to be available very, very soon. Um, this this one is this one technically has D two on it, but they're coming in fourteen C twenty eight N, which is a thumbs up to Civivi. Not only are they doing their fourteen C twenty eight N very well, but which we'll talk about here in a second, but. I'm very happy to see that way above D2. So we're going to pretend like this is 14C28M. Steel, um, you know, construction, it does have the faux bolster. It's a fake bolster lock, um, but this is all steel construction. So the weight is brought down a lot because there's milling on both sides of the scales and you can see the G10 through there. So the, the milling is all the way through, which it brings a brings down the weight because it does have a very good weight in my opinion um it's a solid weight but not overly heavy you do have the steel strap that goes all the way back which adds to some weight the the center or the the balance point is right there usually balance points are up here but to me you know i you know i don't mind it being a little handle heavy i don't really care about the, i mean i I like a knife to be well balanced. It does feel good in the hand, but when it's a little handle heavy, it kind of keeps it in your hand really good. So I don't mind that at all. I kind of, I kind of like it, especially with this knife, but nice, strong construction. This one has green G10. It does come in a whole bunch of different colors. So there are lots of different versions of this knife. And if you don't know about Civivis, you need to just jump on board because they make incredible, incredible knives for an amazing price. You're basically getting the best bang for your buck from just about any company. Yes, there are some companies that can compete, but... Man, with between their their grinds, their blade shapes, their just everything they do on their knives, they're doing an incredible job. Get a Civivi. Uh, it's you can't go wrong with a Civivi. They're they're just incredibly well made. T8s, which I love to see. T8s all the way around except for the clip. Um, deep carry pocket clip. It is a steel deep carry pocket clip. You can see the steel. This is basically the um, the spring for the action, which we'll get into right now. Now, the way I do it, and this is a beautiful hollow ground blade, which we're going to get into in a second. The way I do it is I usually take my palm and put pressure on the front and go down it gets the one click and then from here to here you get a little bit of resistance but then as soon as it gets past that point it'll suck it in so you have this little lip right here for the pull now when you first get it it is incredibly strong but it will break in over time and i'm going to show you a trick how you can break it in a little bit faster but you just grip the knife get a good strong solid grip now you can do it two ways you can Hold this and pull this way with this hand, pull this way, or you can grip it and pull this way, or you can just do the both at the same time. Now, you can continue that. I have a tripod in between. You can continue that and you just go like that, or, you know, you can grip it from behind, get it like that, 
get right in the front, just make sure it doesn't close, and then grip the blade and use this hand to push this this way with a little bit of thumb leverage, thumb right here, pointer finger here, and you're kind of going like that. Snaps it right in. Now, you, you have a good amount of tension right here, so you're not going to close it on your hand unless if you mean to. Now, you can also add to the strength by putting your finger here because if you watch, you see how that moves up a little bit? I'm going to do that. So if you hold this, if it will focus, if you hold this um, right there, right there and lay it down for a couple days or for 24 hours or something it will help loosen that up just a little bit now because otherwise it, it is very strong at first now the um to close it with your pointer you can do it but it is incredibly strong so you're not going to be able to do it for a little while but Unless, you know, you may be stronger than me. I don't know. But I wasn't able. I mean, I could do it at first, but I just didn't really trust it. Now I do trust it where I can go like that and go like that. But, you know, at first it was very strong and I had to kind of get used to it, which only takes a few days, you know. So once you get used to it, you'll be able to do that. But you can tell from the strength that you're not just going to fold it. You know, it's very strong. The ergos are really good in the hand. I mean, this thing is nice and thin, compact, and it's so comfortable. I love the ergos on this thing. I do feel the clip a little bit, but it's a deep carry clip. Of course I do, but it's incredibly comfortable. You have the finger choil that you can get up to and really squeeze for push cuts. But yeah, very, very good ergos. You have this right here to kind of stop you from sliding up the blade. Um, let's go into that blade because this blade is beautiful. It's such a good, good blade. Um, it's nice and thin. Then it has a nice, deep, thin, hollow ground blade that is beautifully well done. Belt set and finish. And boy, does it cut. This thing cuts so good. It passes through materials so nice and you you have a lot of control because the ergos are so good and you can choke up if you want to you can do push cuts all of them are very comfortable now you want to make sure the material doesn't get caught up in the choil if you are holding it back you know and you don't have your finger in the choil um you know then it is open for stuff to get into but in all reality it, it works perfect 15 thousandths behind the edge thickness nice and thin so it already has a thin blade stack then with the, the 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 deep nice hollow ground ground blade it gets down to a very thin edge 15 thousandths great thinness which in return is going to give you a lot of life out of this blade we'll talk about that in a second um, the utility cuts on this thing, the utility cuts are fantastic. It works great. You have a nice acute tip, yet it is strong. Not something you're going to want to pry with, but it's strong enough to where it's uh, tough. You're not going to have to worry about chipping or breaking. You do have a decent amount of belly for the slicing and everything, but it also adds to pulling in the material for utility cuts. So since you have such a neutral grip with the ergos, you can kind of push this right up into your palm, get your finger over the spine, you know, or you can like kind of lay it right in that crook of your hand. And you can, you know, get a lot of leverage down into the tip and, you know, a lot of leverage pulling back, which is going to pull the materials into the tip, you know, because of this belly and is going to help you with utility cuts. It's not going to be as good as a sheep's foot or a worn cliff at utility cuts, but it's damn good. The drop point blade is a jack of all trades blade shape, exactly what it was designed to be. And this is, to me, the a perfect looking or perfect example of a drop point i love this shape i love the grind the whole combination of what how this is made is exactly what i think a drop point is or how a drop point is supposed to be now it does have the choil back here and we're going to get into why it's going to have a lot of life so the stop pin is right 
there for the clothes. You can see it down in there. We'll use the Civivi riffle to point it out, which we'll show some size comparisons here in a second. But right there where I'm poking, that is the closing stop pin, and it hits right where you see this little mark. Right, right there. If you can see it, you can slightly see it. It's right there. There's a little mark right there. Oh, there you go. See that little line? That is where it hits. So, the plunge grinder ends before that, or ends right about there. It starts here and ends about right, right about where it hits. So, from here to here, you have all that sharpening before you ever, you know, you have all that, that steel, basically. So, basically, all the way up to about here, you have to remove steel. That is a lot of life in a knife before you ever have to worry about avoiding something which you can still sharpen it after that it's just you just you want to be careful not to sharpen steel away from the the um the stop pin hitting because that's where it needs to stop but man that's a lot of life and it's a deep hollow grind so since it's a nice deep hollow grind even after removing that steel it's not like it's going to be super thick because it's the same thickness all the way up to like right there. I mean, it's the same thickness up to like right there before it ever starts getting any thicker. Nice, beautiful hollow grind. That's why I love hollow grinds. They help you be able to use and sharpen your knife without taking away the cutting performance or, you know, making it ugly or anything like that. It'll look the exact same, you know, well, for the first few sharpenings. And it, yeah. What a beautiful blade. You can see the swedge up top. And this uh the 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 hole right here is sharp right here. Not in a bad way, but sharp where you, you can get lots of purchase, you know, on it. It is chamfered on the bottom half down here. And this does act as a finger choil, like I said. You can use it. This is very comfortable right here. Everything's knocked down. Everything's lined up very good. The jimping, nice, or sorry, the, the gripping on the G10 is nice and grippy. You do not have milling on the insides, but you have the milling on the outside for where the scales are placed. Now, let's talk about this clip. The clip has flat screws. It's not inset in the G10, but it is reversible. You can flip it, but you're going to want to take these screws and move them to this side, then take this screw and move it to this side, because that screw is going to add to, you know, holding the G10 in. Um, the clip works great, though, and now uh, the pocket um, functions very good. It carries very good. Um, since it's compact, you know, and it's not really thick, you know, for a full-size knife, it's very easy to carry something like this. This is incredibly easy to carry. It's nice in and out of the pocket. You don't really have to worry about um, it hanging out too far because it's a deep carry. You don't have to worry about it falling out. You don't have to worry about it messing up your pants or messing up the lining of your pocket. It works incredibly well. Now, it does have the lanyard back here. Nice hidden lanyard. This is the perfect place to put a lanyard. I love it because one, it's at the end. So if you are a lanyard lover, it's not going to be in the way. It's going to literally hang right out the back. I think a lot of companies try to put a lanyard in and they don't even think about the person that likes the lanyards. I personally don't, but you definitely don't want them in the palm of your hand when you're holding onto your knife. You need them hanging out the back. So in this case, they did it very well. Now, this knife is going to be great for people in areas that can't have a locking knife or can't have, you know, whatever knife. Um, they do make the smaller version, which is a 3-inch and the 3.5-inch version. Let's do some size comparisons really quick. So, like I said, 3.5-inch blade, 8 inches overall, my personal favorite size knife. Here it is next to the Civivi Riffle. Same size. Here it is next to the Concept Main Street. Basically the same size. Same length, at least. Then here it is next to the Benchmade Bug Out and the Spyderco Para 2. 
Uh, right there. So you got a bunch of great size comparisons there. Now, the knife is around 80 bucks. So what do I think about that price? Because it is up there. Okay. I do think that if this was D2, which this, this specific one is, it's not 14C28N. Um, I don't think it's worth 80 bucks. I think that's a little bit pricey for 14C28N. I think it's worth that price. I think it is a great knife. Um, I think the profile of the knife, I do think it is getting up there though in price because it's not titanium. It is steel. Man, please, Savivi, make a locking version of this. Please make a locking version of this. Make a liner or, or you know, a subframe lock. Not subframe. What am I saying? A bolster lock version of this where it's a frame lock, you know, an actual bolster lock version of this. I would love that. I'd totally be on board. Um, let's talk about some bad things really quick. So, couple. One, this this well, this one came in D2. <laughs> I wish it was the 14C28 on. I did not sharpen this yet, but I've sharpened so many Civivis, and I don't think it really matters because one, I know this will sharpen up just fine. I have no issues with sh it sharpening. Um, or I know this one, I can just tell. And But it's not the 14C28N. I do know their 14C28N through the ones I've sh tested so far have been great. So I've been happy with their 14C28N. Um, the D2, I'm not as happy to see. Now, I, it's not that I don't like D2, but for 80 bucks, I really don't. Um, I don't think it's worth that. But... You know, 14C28N, I definitely think it is. Um, a lot of times you think you're going to get better edge retention out of D2, but in practice, that's not always necessarily true. And um, 14C28N, it's easier for people to sharpen. It takes a better edge. Um, D2 is great. It is great, but you don't get the retention, and it's not as easy for companies to do. A lot of times it's burnt a lot of times. It's easy to burn for companies. It's easy to have a burnt edge. There's just so many things to it that make 14C28M better. Next thing. Um, I do wish this, this clip was in set. Now, yes, I do think it would take a little bit away by putting that little thing in there, but I don't care. I, I think it's nice having a clip in set. You know, you even though you're not really going to get much of a lip, I'm nitpicking, obviously. Um, next thing, I do wish this was this this um, sharpening toil was brought to here. And the reason why is because when I go to close it, right, this is a lot of tension for me to close it like that. I would like to just go like this and close it, but I can't because look. When it hits, when it stops right there, it's right there to the edge. Now, you're probably thinking, well, just use your tip of your finger. But when you do it, it kind of, it can jump a little bit forward. And, you know, I've done it a few times like that. And it didn't cut me, but it's right there on the verge. It's kind of close for contact. And if I, if my fat of my finger is any closer, like right there, where I have the most amount of tension or most amount of strength to do it, it will, you know, it's really close and it will cut me because the edge is nice and thin. So if they would have brought this up just a little, I'm talking about a little bit, like, you know, a couple millimeters, it would be, you'd be able to do that without it cutting you because it's just so close. You see what I mean? It's just so close. So I wish I was able to shut it like that. Um, it would just make life a little bit easier. Now, I know this is a two-hand knife and it's not for speed or anything like that, but it just kind of adds the convenience. Now, like I said, after it breaks in, you can do that. So is it that big of a deal? No, it's not. But I got to come up with some bad things. So that's one of them. Um... Next bad thing, which I've already said, and it is the biggest thing on, you know, about this knife, is that they haven't made a damn liner lock or bolster lock version of this knife. I want to see a bolster lock version of this knife. Um, you know, I drew, um, I got a few designs of knives that I've made. One looks pretty similar to this. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, I'd love to design a knife. I'd make the best knife. The best. Anyways, 
Um, yeah, this knife's pretty badass, and I could see this being so awesome for a lot of people. You're probably wondering, can you do this? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> it's uh, very hard. It's the, the st I got very strong hands. You know, I've done construction my whole life, and this does have a strong amount of tension. Now, I will say one other little bad thing is that this edge is a little sharp. You know, even for the pull, I, you know, I like it because it, it's grippy, you know, it, you don't want it slippery. So I can't really say this is a bad thing because if it was chamfered, I might be complaining that it's chamfered. And I don't want to do that because it is pretty sharp um, and it does grip you pretty good. So I'd, I'd hate to to say I want it chamfered and then dislike it if it was. So, But just know that this edge is a little sharp and grippy when you grab it. Like I said, though, it does start breaking in and it gets a lot more easier, but the tension is very strong, which I like because it makes me feel secure when I'm using it. I don't ever feel like I'm going to push this and it's just going to fold on my fingers. So that's really good. And like I said, if you hold it back here, you can stop it from opening i mean it's still gonna push past like if i try right now no matter how hard i'm pushing with my thumb it's going to close like i can just overcome it but you do add a little bit of strength when you hold it right there it does kind of and you can feel it if it moves so you know you can feel the tension and then stop so it doesn't continue so it is kind of a safetyness um or a safety but all in all, this is an incredible knife, and thank you, Civivi. Thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. Peace.